Welcome back, everybody, to the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. I'm Chris Witt. With me, as always, is Mr. Adam Schmidt. Adam, how are you today, sir? Pretty good. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, got, 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 I, got, I got a few things that, that uh, irritated me today that uh, I like to talk about. Uh, that happened because I got to make some sales calls today. I actually got to work a little bit, which was fun um, and exciting. So I got a couple stories. I want to get into that. Some things that annoyed me today, maybe not annoyed me, but irritated me a little bit. And then uh, we have, we got a lot of stuff going on today, but we got, uh, we, it, it, it would be, we would, we would not be doing justice uh, if we didn't talk about the biggest things going on in the world, uh, obviously coronavirus is still happening and we're still trying to space out uh, as summer gets here, which obviously seems to be a little difficult for some people. Uh, and then we are, we've got, uh, we've, we've got uh, a, a policeman who murdered uh, a, another human being and the police brutality against uh, uh, against African Americans is coming to a head, hopefully for the last time. Which I, of course, I doubt it will be the last time. But this is this this seems to be one where we might actually be getting some something uh, something being done about it. So hopefully we can the the, the we're, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in this, and then we'll get into some sports. I promise we'll get into sports Absolutely. and some comedy and some comedy. You can't beat it. So, so before we get into all that, though, let's talk about the people that support us. Adam, what do you got? Well, Chris, no matter your level of fitness, beginner, intermediate, advanced, if you like to be challenged a little bit or a lot, you want the benefit of working out with a personal trainer without the cost of a personal trainer, then training personally with Peggy Edwards is for you. Training personally is circuit training for all levels with a personal trainer at your pace on your time. Peggy Edwards will keep your workout safe, fresh, and fun. Visit Training Personally with Peggy Edwards at trainingpersonally.com. All the information you need about the gym, pricing, everything is there about everything about Peggy. Uh, trainingpersonally.com, you can check her out on Facebook at Training Personally with Peggy Edwards. Uh, and the gym shall be open likely sometime this month. We are now in June. I believe it's the middle of June. I think she's shooting for like the 15th or 16th is the goal. Yes. Um, yeah. And there's still, I, I think it's like, like a lot of people, I think she's just monitoring the, what the, uh, governor says and, and, you know, the state mandated stuff. She's kind of waiting to see exactly how all that plays out but yes you're right i think she's shooting for in a couple weeks here so uh once that's open it's at 3634 budno avenue in cincinnati ohio um you can contact peggy personally peggy p-e-g-g-y at trainingpersonally.com give her a call 513-328-0296 that's peggy edwards training personally 513-328-0296 uh, the Nosebleed Sports Podcast is also brought to you by the Ohio Mosquito Control. If you're in the Cincinnati area and you have a mosquito problem, these are the guys to call. They will come. They will set up a treatment plan to make sure that you no longer get bitten up. I got a pool. People are at my house all the time, hanging out by the pool. I have these guys come to the house. Nobody gets bit. My kids get giant welts from these mosquitoes everywhere we go except at my house so we just don't leave we just stick around here and don't get mosquito bites because these guys are the pest of the pest is what they are uh anyway but they they do offer quality services in the cincinnati area at reasonable prices they are family owned and operated they have residential and commercial applications one-time applications if you got a special event going on uh all you got to do is go to ohio-mc.com or you can call 513-347-3594, 513-347-3594. Jason or uh, his brother or his wife, someone will be in contact with you. Uh, they are a family owned and operated and they're grateful for the opportunity to serve you. 
and they personally respond to every request. Pretty cool. You get the actual owners of the company when you make the phone call and these guys do a phenomenal job. So give them a call or go to ohio-mc.com. You can book the whole thing online, never call a soul. If you're like Adam and you'd rather not say a word to anybody ever and just stay in a corner of your house and hope that the ghosts don't get you, the ghost of the Rona don't get you, then you will just stay at home, hit the book online, and they'll take care of it for you. Ohio-mc.com. Now. Yes, sir. I don't disagree with, with anything you said there. No, of course not. I know. <laughs> with that being said, um, I, want, I, I, I think we both, we both talked about this yesterday in our show prep. We, we, we love sports. There's not a lot of sports going on right now. There's a lot of possibilities for sports coming up. Uh, which are going to be kind of fun to talk about. We're going to bring back a little segment today, uh, the old my favorite swipe left, swipe right. We're each going to do a little bit uh, on that for the NBA and for Major League Baseball. But before that, um, my biggest thing right now with the protests that are going on and some riots and looting that have been, have have come from there, I just would like to send my thoughts and prayers to everyone in and around these areas. Uh, uh, peaceful protests are, are a way that, you can, that a lot of things can get done and they are wonderful. And unfortunately there are some, a few bad apples that can make things, uh, that can make these protests look terrible. Please try to focus on the good that these people are trying to do. Um, I, 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 as two, middle-aged white men who grew up in uh you know predominantly white areas uh we, we we have no idea what the struggle that these people go on every day both of us i think you would want to say don't see color uh when you look at somebody i've always you know thought that way uh i don't i started today to think about that more and i don't think i like that term because I feel like if you don't see color when you look at somebody, then you never really see the struggle that they endure. Uh, and, and these people endure quite a bit. So in, uh, I'm going to try to, I don't know how exactly to, to change that, but I, both of us, um, I think, uh, can, can, can both say that what happened to George Floyd is without a doubt uh, police brutality. I don't, I, it, I think everyone should be against police brutality. I don't think everyone should be against the police. I think the police are phenomenal. I know so many policemen, police women that do their job every day and come home to their kids and their husbands and their wives. And they, you know, it's, it's, it's not the easiest job to do. You deal with criminals all day, but those are really good people. And there are some people that when they get nervous and when they get put in the wrong situation, they do not make the right decision. And those are the people that we're talking about here when police brutality occurs. And I don't know how to stop it. I don't know if it will ever be stopped, but I hope this is the loudest I've ever seen protests against something like this. Uh, except for, you know, going back to, you know, the initiation of, of, segre uh, of segre not the initiation, but going back to trying to get rid of segregation back in the 60s. Civil so rights this, movement, right. Right. This is as big of an event that I, that I think will go down in history as that movement. And, um, and, I, and I hope it really does push people to really look and see uh, – what people will really have to go to and, and just real quick before I'm done here, because I don't want to get into a lot of stories. I don't want to get into cliches because I, I feel like everybody's just putting up a, uh, you know, putting their blanket statement out there, you know, to try to show, you know, whereas, you know, where were we, you know, five years ago, four years ago when this has happened so many other times. So instead of coming out and saying, Hey, I'm with you, I got your back. That's, that's, I would rather come out and, and just say, you know, uh, don't be overcome by evil, overcome evil with good. That's something from Romans in the Bible that I heard um, my buddy, who's the, 
uh, Arizona, Arizona State football coach, Herm Edwards, said that to me. And I love that. I love, like, killing with kindness kind of a thing. It's not always easy to do, but you, you can't be overcome with evil because evil happens to you. You've got to find we, – we have to – and I take that. That's, that came out wrong. We can't fight fire with fire. We've got to find a way to fight good with good. We've just got to become human. Everybody just needs to be human. I don't, I think it's just humanity. I don't know. I can't, it's, it's, I don't know. I know a buddy of mine had to move his mom out of downtown Louisville because of how close she was to the stuff going on. And you know, it's scary. It's scary to have to do stuff like that. And it shouldn't be like that. And you know, that this, this guy, like a lot of other people grow up nervous every time a cop drives by and it shouldn't be that way because 90% of them or 80% of the of most cops are good, are good people and are good, good guys. And we've got to find a way to either get rid of the bad ones or find a way to do a better job of making sure they have, uh, what's the word? They have consequences like anybody else. And it feels like this might be the first time that I've ever seen that's, that there will be consequences for these officers. They just raised it to uh, second degree manslaughter instead of first degree. And they have charged the other three officers that sat right next to him as this guy's telling me can't breathe and just watched this guy literally choke and strangled to death. He was, he basically just suffocated to death because nobody would like, nobody would get off of him as he's handcuffed on the ground with four people on top of him. Absolutely ridiculous. It's terrible. I don't want to get too deep into it because I get to talk about stuff like this, man, and I, I, I can't stop. And I end up saying stupid, stupid middle-aged white things. <laughs> well, that, that's, you're right. And I'm with you. I, I, it, it's easy to do that because of exactly, you know, you're hearing a lot of this, a lot of people talk about uh, a, a handful of terms that, you hear off and on, but when something like this happens, you hear constantly until, you know, things kind of, things kind of die down, I guess. Um, and one of those things is implicit bias, which is exactly what that is. And, you know, and, and privilege, white privilege, those are things that, you know, are there that people are born into or people are grow into or are raised into or whatever. Um, and it's not necessarily a thing that you see all the time or that you that you understand or realize are happening um, within yourself or within and within your surroundings as you're growing up. You don't realize that that's what that is. Uh, but then once you get to be an adult and you're living your life, you you and especially when something like this happens and people are ultra aware of those things, especially now which is a good thing um, because identifying those things I think is the first part of trying to understand how to go, how to move forward and how to make positive change. Right. So, you know, um, I've had a lot of, a lot of thoughts and, and feelings and emotions and everything about, about everything that's gone on. I'll tell you that I haven't been able to bring myself. It's been a week. I think now I haven't been able to bring myself to watch the video in full. I've only seen little, you know, 10, 15, 20 second clips um, because I've heard a couple of people describe it in a way that like makes me so upset that I can't watch it happen, you know? Um, and it, so what everybody knows what happened uh, with George Floyd in Minneapolis and um, we see, you know, if you're on social, any social media, you're seeing, there's no way you're not seeing um, every, you know, 90% of people react to it. Um, you know, a lot of people were on the same page. You still have a lot of people that aren't, that don't understand each other totally and have completely different um, points of view and perspectives on it. And, um, you know, there's, there's still a lot of, a lot of difference in the way that people understand everything and the way that people think about things. And, you know, it's all based on what your, you know, what, what, what your mind is like all the time. And you don't like, you know, like I said, you don't always realize it. Um, 
but there's a, there's a lot of stuff that there's a lot of things that, that can be done and, and kind of need to be done to, to change everybody's minds um, so that we all can get in a place where we are, um, where we are closer to being, you know, or I, cause I don't think it's going to happen in our lifetime, but um, get to a place where we are, or, or where everybody does have the same opportunities and people do have the same, uh, you know, a lot of the same fears and a lot of the same things that they don't have to fear and, um, you know, uh, misconceptions about people because of the color of their skin, whether it be white or black or Asian or whatever, um, you know, get those implicit biases out and, uh, and come as close as we can to getting rid of them and as many people as we can. And for me, the, the best way to do that. And, you know, one of the things that people have talked about a lot is if you're silent, you're complicit. And yeah. that's, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to totally understand that. I, I do understand where people that, that feel that way are coming from. It's, it's hard as a person that, um, internalizes most things um it, you know and we've talked about uh being in a place where you know because we don't we don't address things like this on this podcast very often because we spend a, most of our time in sports we, we we concentrate on sports and a lot of this stuff we might have opinions we might have feelings about it but we we don't research th things kind of like this uh, right. or, or anything just off off sports or off comedy or whatever we normally address here. Um, and we don't want to speak on something, especially at length, um, about something we're not completely knowledgeable about, you know, for fear that we're going to come across like idiots, you know, yeah. I, I feel like I've, I, uh, come across like that even when I'm talking about sports that I watch all day. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that point. And I feel like I get to rambling about something like this and I, I'll sound like the biggest idiot that's ever walked across the face of the earth. But the, I, I want to point out one thing about what you said, the, the, the silence is, is com complicity or complete. I don't even can't even, yeah. I don't even know how to say the word. So, uh, but, but I, I, I've come to, I've had some conversations with, with, with people that I, that I uh, come across in, in everyday life. And, and a big part of, I think what that, what they mean by that is something that I do. And I hate, or that I don't do, I should say. And I, I kind of, you know, looking back on it, I understand it. Uh, you know, I come across a lot of people in, in that have their opinions about people of whichever race, uh, mostly of, of, of African American races, and they have comments and they say them. And I don't laugh. I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't give in to them and, and start uh, letting them talk more about it. But at the same time, I don't stop them and say, Hey, look, man, I not here. Not with me. I, I think you're wrong there. I, I, I'm not into that kind of thing. I don't, I don't always say that. And I think that is a big part of where that silence is complicity or com I still can't say whatever that word is, yeah. but I think that's a big part of it in, in, I think for your average middle-aged white guy that, that uh, who in my head, I can say all this, all I want on whatever platform we have. But as Booger McFarland said today, you can say anything you want, but what are you going to do? What are you doing about it? Like you, you, I can say a lot, but what am I doing about it? So my change that I would like to put forth from here on out is, is to, to try to stop the compl complicity, com Complicity, complicity, and you know, just try to let people know around me that you know, it, it, most of the time they don't even mean what they say, and yeah. I don't believe they really mean what they say. So it's it, it just let them know I don't I'm not comfortable. Let's let's uh, if if this is how you're gonna feel, I'm not into it. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's kind of where kind of where I was going is is um more than posting for me, you know, I, I feel like if I post the same things everybody else is posting on social media, wherever it is, I don't feel like that's 
doing anybody any good. I don't feel, I feel like I'm just echoing everything everybody else is saying. Here, does um, I, I understand that um, maybe the more people that speak out, the louder the voice is. And I, I, I get it from that angle. Um, but for me, I, I just don't, and, and I would much rather deal with it um, in, a, in a more personal way. And so one of the a great exercise that I've heard quite a few times now is um, pick up your phone. Like if you're listening to this right now or watching this right now, pick up your phone, pull up your message, your text app, pull up your, uh, your call log. And if you're white, look at your last five to 10 text messages and your last five to 10 phone calls, how many of those are to people of color? And, and maybe it's the same way if, if you know, if you're, if you're black and uh, you're kind of in a, in a similar situation like you were talking about, if you grew up around all, you know, mostly black people and went to school with mostly black people and you live in a neighborhood with mostly black people, it might be the same, it might be the same deal. But specifically, like it is the same. Well, there's nothing wrong with, I, it is I feel like the, uh, the, your feelings may be very similar in that, not that you have hatred or you're against them. You're just the, the, you, you've been, you, you grew up in a culture where people are constantly talking about differences there. And if you're predominantly, you know, in an area like that, then you're going to feel that every time you see somebody. Yeah. It's like yeah. you, it's like with you, if you, you hate you, you, you do, did not grow up with dogs. You are not fond of dogs, but if so, if you walk down the street and you see a dog, you're just, you're just nervous immediately. It could be the nicest dog in the world. It could be the meanest dog in the world, but you don't have enough uh, exposure to dogs to know if that's a, you know, what you're walking up to. Yeah. I feel like that might be pretty good. Yeah. Um, and, and I, but I think, um, you know, I kind of said it could work either way, but I think right now it's probably important to, to focus more on if you're, if you're white, I'm just going to talk to white people right now. <laughs> if you're white, just think about that. Just think about if you are, um, you know, look at your call log, look at your text messages. If you don't have any of those people in there, if you don't have people of color in there, if you're, you know, especially in the last, you know, week, month, two months, six months, if you haven't spoken to very many people of color, um, think about, think about why that might be. Uh, and then really no matter why that is, think about what you can do to change that. Because if you, if you get to know more people that don't look like you, that don't believe all the same things that you believe, um, and that have different experiences and different backgrounds than you do. Uh, that's the way that, that everybody becomes more toler tolerant. That's the way everybody becomes more uh, understanding and accepting of different types of people um, than you. And, uh, and, and I think that's the best way to do it. And if you, and, and for me, I would much rather, I, that's where I've tried to start is reaching out privately to to people of color, to, to uh, people who are black that I know, um, and just offering support. And if you can do that, I think that's a good place to start is, you know, reach out to those people and don't let go of any opinions you have about anything involving this. Just reach out for support and, and make it only about that and, and make it that I'm here to support you and I'm here to listen to you. And it doesn't, I don't have, I don't want to get in. I, I don't need to tell you about what I think about police or uh, rioters or peaceful protests. I don't need to talk. I don't need to tell you any of my opinions about that. I don't need to have opinions in this text conversation or this phone call about that. I'm just here to tell you that I'm here for you. Tell me what you need from me. And, um, and, and figure out, let's, let's learn about each other better, more personally, um, and reach out to more people like that. And, and if you have nobody in your life like that, or very few people in your life like that, you have to, and this is the hardest thing for, in the world for me, get out of your comfort zone. I, I, it's, 
for for the last year, two years, I've heard I, I haven't heard more, anything more than that is get out of your comfort zone. Not even just about race, but to grow as a person in any way, you have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to experience different things that you don't necessarily want to experience. And I have a very, very, very hard time doing that, especially the older I get, the more comfortable I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, but especially in a case like this, when it's involving other human beings, um, that's, that's when it has to happen. That's when you have to put yourself in positions. You have to have an uncomfortable conversation or an uncomfortable an uncomfortable meeting with somebody. And when I say uncomfortable, I don't mean you have to go up and say, we have a different opinion about something. We need to talk about it. I mean, you might not know a person or you might barely know a person or you might work with a person that you just say hi to or whatever, or a little joke here and there or something. Go up to that person and ask them about their family. Ask them about what church they go to. Ask them about... Uh, you know, what they like, um, those kinds of things. Just know them as a person. Because if you get more people like that, that don't look like you, that don't do the same things you do, that don't feel the same way about everything that you do, um, that live in different neighborhoods. And, and, you know, if you get to know more people like that, I think you're going to, you're going to understand that you're going to start seeing people in a different way I think than you did before when people that don't that you don't know that you don't know necessarily anything about because of those implicit biases because of the things that you just pick up from your surroundings as you're growing up and as you you're in adulthood and you're just picking up things in your echo chambers especially when you are a, if you're a white person that grew, grows up around all white people and everything you get in these echo chambers that everybody thinks the same way Everybody says, you know, does the same things and thinks the same things or mostly the same things and has the same experiences. And, and that's you, if you branch out and you, you try to meet people and really get to know people, um, I think that's the most important way to start changing, uh, start everybody changing this thing. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I, I, I know we're a sports podcast and there might be people out there saying, stick to sports. But uh, I think at this point in time, this is kind of, I, I think this is, uh, it, it, there's a lot of things bigger than sports, but this, this is just something that needs to be, needs to be confronted by everyone. And if we can be out here, like you said, to, to give somebody some way to try to just give this a try what he said, you know, just give it a try. I'm not necessarily telling you to do what Adam did because I know Adam's not going to do it. He ain't walking up to somebody he's never met before and going to ask him where they go to church. He can give you advice, but he ain't doing that. But at the same time, I think you understand what he's saying. If there's someone in your life that you know or you're an acquaintance with and they're without and you just automatically just say, hey, yeah, yes, yeah, I know so-and-so. Stop, talk. That's the kind of thing uh, that is, it's important. And, and, and I don't, the thing that gets me the most, and I hate it all, hearing it all the time is, oh, I do that all the time. I do that all the time. Yeah, yeah I'm always, I'll talk, I'll do. You can say you do it all the time. That's fine. I don't need to hear it. Just continue to do it. Yeah. Make yourself better. You don't have to tell me your stories of who, what, I went and talked to a black fella today. No, I don't need, that's, that's not what we're talking about. It's, it's, it's not doing it just to say you did it. It's doing it to help yourself. And, and if you can help yourself and change the way you think, or, or not, maybe not even change the way you think, you may already, you may not feel anything there, but it, it, it just changes the way you see things. Then you are better equipped to have conversations with other people to try to help them change the way they see things. Um, I don't know. I, I wish there was a million things I could do to help uh, to help this, I, I I could never imagine having my son at seven years old and having to sit him down and have a conversation about, you know, how to act around uh, uh, authority figures and and uh, when you're in certain situations, you know, what immediately to do so you can come home that night. You know, that's I, it's it's a conversation I couldn't imagine having with my kid. Uh, as any a parent has a conversation of, you know, respect, uh, uh, authority and respect, do things like this. 
but I, it's a whole different conversation. I, you know, you, you hear about these people that have to have these conversations. It's nothing like any conversation I've ever been given in my life. And I couldn't imagine it. And um, I hate that people have to go through it. I almost want to become a cop so I can try to make things better. I, it, it almost makes you want to be a cop so you can go out there and show show other people it may, it may try to just change just to try to change it i don't know i don't know yeah. it's it's tough anyway it's tough that's all i got yeah we uh we are almost never hardly ever going to ever get serious about anything especially when it comes to you know something outside of sports uh, we might talk about like we've been talking about the coronavirus for a long time now and for a couple months. We mostly joke about it and tell our little stories about what we're doing right. around it and that kind of thing. <clears throat> but this is uh, this is something that's I think is in, without question important enough to, um, you know, there's not a lot of things that are more important than this. Well, we had a conversation yesterday. Uh, we talked about if we would even bring this up on the podcast and we both agreed that it needed we needed to say something because of how we feel about it. Uh, we both have pretty strong feelings about this kind of thing. And uh, God, it makes, it gets me, gets me a little emotional sometimes when I start thinking about it, but it's, dude, it's, it's, it's just, I think of, I think of so many people and what they have to go through. It's just, it's not right. And I will, I don't care if, if this comes off as 45 minutes of us talking about something we never would and being as serious as we probably will ever be on this podcast. But if, you know, if you don't like it, turn it off. I don't want you watching the podcast. You probably don't. Well, what we're doing isn't for you anyway. So I don't know, man. I, uh, I will tell you this though. Do you have anything else to add into that? Cause I got something to, to that, that has to go with this, but it's going to move us on. I would like to hear what you had. So I got to go to Columbus today uh, to do a little, uh, to, to, to do some work, right? I got to work today. I got to make some couple sales calls, which was pretty funny uh, because you come in and people who usually are like, man, I ain't got time to see you today. Get out of here. They're like, come in. We haven't seen anybody in so long. Come talk to us. I forgot my mask, right? All these lumber yards are telling me vendors are allowed to come in, but wear masks. You know, they've got everything blocked off everywhere. I forgot, I got all the way to Columbus, forgot a mask. So I go to Target and bought a bandana. So I walked around all day with a baby blue, uh, like it had like ducks on it or something. <laughs> like ducks and weird like summertime things. And I tied that bad boy up and was walking in and out like I was going to rob everybody. It was, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. But the thing that I wanted to segue into this is there's one thing that irritated me more than anything. When I was in Columbus, before I left, I always stop at my little cigar shop. My guy, Don Ray up the Don Ray cigars up there. He rolls his own cigars. He's got some really good stuff up there. I get, uh, I, I get, I get a half dozen or so of the ones I really like that are, you know, four or five bucks a stick. And then I get one or two a little more expensive fellas that he, that he rolls everything himself. He's got all the other, all the other sticks there as well. So shameless plug for my guy, for my guy, Patrick up there. Um, anyway, I turn on to his street gay. He's on gay street downtown and everything is boarded up because they broke every window and they didn't take a lot of his, a lot of his cigars, but they busted every window out. They did. I can't tell you how annoyed I am by the fact that I had to go to his cigar lounge about five, six oh. blocks away, and he doesn't keep his hand-rolled stuff in there, and the police will not let – the city of Columbus will not let him back in his shop until tomorrow, and God knows when I'm ever going to be able to go to Columbus again. So I had to buy some regular, some regular cigars, not hand-rolled, some right well they're probably hand rolled but by somebody else in some <laughs> other in city Columbia. country <laughs> so i uh i'm a little, I'm a little perturbed about that I'm a little perturbed i had to go to uh, i had to make two stops to get cigars and the first stop the uh 
busted out, second stop, didn't even have my, my, my cigars. And you can't buy them anywhere else. It's the only guy that rolls them. I can't do it, man. I'm, I'm irritated. That, you're, like, irritated. you're like Michael Jordan level cigar guy, man. I mean, he gets. Uh, they're, four, they're $4 cigars. So, no, <laughs> the stuff he's smoking is probably $15 a stick. No, I'm not, not quite there. <laughs> but he's getting stuff that only like one person in the world has. That's yeah, that could be true. Right. That could be true. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'm sorry that uh, I'm sorry for your first world uh, middle-aged white guy problems that you had to go to a different store for your cigars. <laughs> Once again, see, and here's the other thing too. Like if you did that on purpose, I, I know purpose. you did. But if you can't, <laughs> Uh, we, we talk about this all the time. We do like to have fun on the podcast, right? If you can't have a little bit of fun at the same time, it's okay to still laugh. When times are bad, it's still okay to laugh as long as you laugh appropriately. I feel like that's an appropriate laugh, right? Yeah, you made fun of me for being a middle-aged white guy. Yeah. And gonna, give I make fun of you, you make fun of me, we'll, we'll be safe. Yeah, um, don't worry, I do plenty of that. I'm told that I might make fun of you too much. What? I've been told that. Yeah, I've been told that I got to lay off on Adam a little bit on wow. the on the podcast. Strongly disagree. Strongly disagree. <laughs> Make fun of me more often, please. Um, so anyway, so that we don't both take a drink at the same time and nobody's talking out of my mind down. <laughs> uh, no, I. So you okay? So your you you that was uh, your story about you're getting back out now on the road. I got back out, um, which if you've been listening to this podcast is is a big deal for me uh, because I'm still a big Freddy cat of uh, scaredy cat of, of the coronavirus. Uh, but I did, I, my other job uh, coaching basketball started back up, you know, we got the okay to get back in the gym um, with certain protocols. You know, uh, we as coaches wore masks that if we were, if we were up close coaching, you know, within six feet or whatever uh, we would have to have to have the mask on. Um, otherwise we stayed spread out and you can only have a certain number of girls on, on each side of the floor. Uh, luckily it's June and our season starts in December. So there aren't very many people there yet <laughs> for the drills and skills and the conditioning stuff. Um, so it was easy. It was nice and easy to keep everybody spread out because there weren't a whole lot of people there yet. A lot of, a lot of girls are playing other sports and, um, doing AAU stuff. And so, so they're getting their conditioning and stuff elsewhere. Um, but anyway, so we did get back in though, and I was around other people for one of the very first times in three months or whatever. Um, so anyway, I, I'm uh, I'm still. That was yesterday, and I'm still alive today. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy you're still alive. So My far, question so for you is: Did you take a bath in alcohol when you got home? Um, no, I did bring. Um, Lysol wipes with me and left them in the car and I brought hand sanitizer left in the car. So I used the sanitizer as soon as I got in the car. Um, I did go wash my hands uh, at least one, one time through, throughout. Actually, I think as soon as we got done, um, I went and washed my hands. And then actually a few of us coaches, uh, actually all the coaches that were there stayed and shot around a little bit, uh, shot on the gun for a few minutes. So uh, it was nice to get some shots up. First time I've touched a basketball and also – since the beginning of this whole thing in, in a few months. Uh, so it was, it was great to do that. Uh, although it was the 28 and a half, it still feels like a softball in my hand instead of an actual basketball. There's uh, something weird about injured. that. That's what my Parker's got one of those for outside. Mm -hmm. And I kick his butt in around the world. I can't miss with that little thing, dude. I, when I say little thing, I mean, it's not that much smaller. What's the regular size basketball, 32? 29 and a half. It's one inch. It's one inch. One inch small. It, I'm telling you right now. Big difference, I'm though. Unstoppable. I'm unstoppable with that ball. Yeah. I'm stuck. You, like, you, like uh, you feel like you're shooting it in the ocean, right? That's uh, right. You, you feel it. like, yeah, you could, you could fit two regular regulation basketballs inside a rim. You could fit like three or four of those things, it feels There's like. Right? five of them in there. My, <laughs> nephew, my nephew thinks that I'm the greatest basketball player to ever live. <laughs> Just let him keep thinking that, man. Um, so yeah, so, so anyway, I got out, I got around people. It's every, it's, it's, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays from, from now until who knows when, till the season starts, I guess. So, uh, I'm going to be kind of, kind Man, of, 
you're going to need now, some. And now I'm being kind of pushed back in. You're kind of, I'm kind of being pushed back into society. I'm going to be as careful as I possibly can. I'm going to be way more careful than everybody else. I promise you that. There's no <laughs> um, doubt. Did but, you wear gloves? Did you wear gloves? I did not wear gloves. Did you want to wear gloves? I wanted to wear gloves. I did not wear gloves. <laughs> uh, so it was, uh, yeah, it, it was, it, it was kind of fun when I, when I walked in and people saw this, yeah. this and this, and the first, the first yeah. words I got when I walked in was from one of the other coaches, the one, the, the, uh, assistant varsity coach, she called me little Dicky, <laughs> little Dicky. So that's who I look right, like. I called you little Dicky. And I, and I love him. So I was happy about that. So there. Talk about a talk about a guy that like is is us to a T. His raps are nothing but making fun of himself. Basically, that's yes. one. How can you not like Lil Dicky? Have you seen? Have you seen? My name is uh oh, what's it called? It's it's on FX. Have you seen that hey. little show he's got? My hey. name is Dick. Yeah, have you seen that? Every episode of the first season. I can't wait for the second season to come yeah. out. Love it. So great. Yeah. So great. Oh, uh, Lil Dicky. All right. On that note. Let's let's get into some NBA. All right, I want to play a little swipe left, swipe right with you. Where you go? All right. So the NBA is another step closer to starting up basketball. They're probably the closest of any league, obviously because football doesn't start till September. These guys are trying to get started sometime in July. Uh, they've got. I, I, I'll let you get into the the crazy details. They're doing. They, there's some really there's some really crazy things that are going to be involved in this, the way that they've got it proposed right now, which is basically it's, it's just going to be playoff teams. And if you're within six games of the eighth seed, then you will be, uh, then, then you will be there and there'll be another small tournament for those guys. And it's like a three game tournament, but if one team wins so many games, then the other team's automatically out and, there's basically it's going to be 22 teams, the 22 or 23, 22 teams I think, um, nine from the Eastern Conference and 13 from the. It's math right there. See that math real quick, Albert? Do you see that? That's that elder math real fast. Pretty good. Uh, so then there'll be 13 teams in the Western Conference that'll be playing for the rights to be in the playoffs. Now. As of right now, game seven would be on a Monday night in October. So what I would like to do for swipe left, swipe right for you is everybody's going to be playing in, at Walt Disney World in Florida, right? We're all going to be playing in the same place. They'll be staying in the same uh, resort, basically. So, uh-oh, what? They're going to finish the season one month before I'm supposed to be there on vacation. Oh, Man, maybe there'll be some sticking around. No, they're going to be ready to get out of there so fast. Because <laughs> their families aren't going to be allowed to be there, from what I understand. See, now I thought uh, some, some, some places have said they're going to do immediate family. Uh, but, you know, some of these people are, are, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old. They have no immediate family except for, like, their mom and dad and brother and sister. So how they're going to they, – they've got to allow – They've got to allow some people with them, right? I, I, I feel like you have to have a support team. Everybody needs a support system around them, especially when you're in the playoffs. I mean, it's so important. So they're going to have to figure that out. But besides that, there's no home field advantage anymore. Home court advantage is now gone. That being said, I lost. That's all right. I have it saved as a bookmark. Let me get back in here. Where's my bookmark? Where's my favorites? Oh, geez. Here we go. All right. So uh, I accidentally pulled up the Ohio Mosquito Control page on the page that I had opened up with that. <laughs> All right. So there are some ideas to possibly increase home court advantage. I want you to swipe left or swipe right to the ones that you like. I believe I got five of them here. Okay. Number one, swipe left or swipe right. The higher seeded team is awarded the first possession of the second, third, and fourth quarters following the traditional jump ball to begin the game. I uh, swipe left on that. Okay. Swipe it's left and why? Just for people, uh, just for people that that may not have heard this before, 
or have been married for the last 20 years or whatever, when we say swipe left, swipe right, it's in reference to uh, dating apps. <laughs> Uh, and yeah. if you swipe left, you see somebody's profile, you swipe left, that means you're not interested. If you swipe right, that means you are interested. Two people swipe right at each other, you match, you talk, you uh, live happily ever after. Now, Adam is to the point now where he walks down the street or drives down the road or watches TV, and his head is just swiping left and right on everybody that pops up. He's been doing it that long. It's just, it, it's, it's unconscious. It's an unconscious behavior. So that's why we do it on here. All right. So you're swiping left to that. I'm swiping left to that um, because there's no, you, you aren't getting home court advantage. I mean, you're not changing the rules. Possibly be getting changing the rules of the game and giving you, giving you an extra, you know, potentially three extra possessions. I don't think is the right way to, to do it. It's just going to be, it, it's okay that for this, for the rest of this season, it's going to be a neutral court. All right. I don't think there's any reason your home court advantage is being the better team. Okay. Well, don't, hey, 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 don't, don't jump into just, just mixing all my swipe left and swipe rights right away. No. I've so, got five so, so, more. I, I swipe left on that. You're about to swipe. Uh, now I already know what you're going to do to this entire thing. You're swiping well, left to everything. Well, no, no, no. Maybe not. Let, let me okay. hear Have you heard these before or is these brand no. new? Okay. Brand new. All, right. All right. So number two, number two, um, the higher seeded team receives an extra coaches challenge. Um. Yeah, I mean, I swipe, I swipe left on that one, too. I know you do. All right, this is going to be – all right, this is nowhere near as fun because well, you started off your original comment with don't change any rules. Even though they're changing all the rules to do this, Mr. Uh, I'm the old man, old baseball man, Mr. I, I'm always the one. You're always making fun of me because don't change any rules in baseball, I always say. You get on me for it, and all of a sudden they have to do this crazy stuff with round robins for the eight and nine seed, ten seed teams, but you're but no, no, don't change any rules. If you're going to change some rules, this is the time to do it. In game rules. Uh, now I know there we've talked about some of them for baseball too, but um, I, I just don't I just don't think that if you're trying to give one team a home court advantage, if that's the theory behind behind that's the theory them, behind and stuff. Yeah, I, I just don't know that it's enough to actually give – I mean, you give them a little advantage, but why I, Why do that? I mean, you're still playing the same game in the same arena every night. It's not really – All right, all right, all right, all right, never mind. Just, I'm going to no, keep, on. I'm keep going. I'm going to keep going because I've got three more here and then I have one that I would like to suggest. That I heard, I actually heard it on uh, Golik and Wingo this morning, and it made me laugh so hard while I was driving my car. So I want to put this one in. All right. How, so this is this is another one that uh, this is probably the most out there one that I can't stand. The higher seated team is allowed to designate one player to be able to have seven fouls instead of six fouls before fouling out. Oh. Huh. Don't even answer that. Swipe left. We know. Well, swipe left, but I, that one's kind of interesting to me. I, like, I don't, I don't that's think the, that's different. the stupidest one I think out of all of them. <laughs> See, it's a, it's interesting to me because I feel like most people would think, well, obviously, you know, LeBron, you're gonna pick, you're gonna pick the best player on each team, right? No, no, you pick your hack of, you pick your hack shack guy. You pick Kendrick Perkins. You yeah. pick uh, Charles Oakley. That's who you take. Draymond Green. Those are the guys that get the seventh foul. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's how often does LeBron James play a game sense. that he needs an extra foul? But there, yeah, and there might be. You know, I feel like coaches now are are so much more creative in finding ways to to strategize that it might not even be that simple. Like people might come up with a, with another. Maybe you pick your your best. Um, well, or or maybe it's just whoever you decide, whoever whoever your best defender is, maybe because you're yeah. going to put him on. Now he, he can not be your Kendrick Perkins or your Hackashack guy. He can be that much more aggressive. 
Yeah, your your Andre Iguodala's and your Scottie Pippins and your guys that are – and maybe your Draymond Greens and the guys that are going to play, that are going to defend the other team's best player. Maybe that's who you give the most fouls to. And then that might be your second best player on your team. But if that's your best defender or maybe your best player. All right. So how, about this, how about this one? The higher-seeded team being able to transport their actual hardwood court from their home arena to Orlando to try to preserve the feel of their home playing experience. What? Wait, was that the one that you made up? No, nope, no, nope, that's still that's still to come. Wow, I mean, that's just dumb logistically. <laughs> You're gonna pay to have your court now. They've got that, that that switch, you know, changing the, the floors oh, and arenas down to a an hour and a half. Hour it's, and a half yeah. two hours. They're gonna have it's, it up and down. It's fast. And you 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 know, you stack it all up, you throw it on a truck, and you drive it across the country or whatever, or maybe you stick it on a plane or, or something, a cargo plane. But so it's not impossible, but still, I mean, you, it, no, you're in the same building. All right, the background's going to be the same. You're not going to bring in the same depth from the stands to your the back of your. And your that's where the and, biggest. That's where the biggest difference between courts are. Yeah, your yeah. eye, your visual of the basket. So for your depth perception. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So next, <laughs> that was a, so that was a swipe left. I take it right. Yeah, it's. Just, I don't just don't think it's worth it. Swipe left or swipe right, an off court feature in which playoff teams in order of seeding one through 16 receive first choice on picking which hotel they will stay at in the ESPN wild world of sport wide world of sports complex uh, and Disney world resorts. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. So, so, so the number one seed gets to choose what, what destination basically in Disney world they're going to stay at. Now, I've never been there. In November, if we end up going still in November, that'll be my first time. I imagine that most of the most or all of the hotels in the in the park or whatever on the ground on the Disney grounds um, have to be the same or pretty close to the same. Oh, that is not that false. Correct. Oh, that's big. You've time. been there. So, I've been there twice, uh, stayed in their hotels once, and comparatively, there's a reason why you can stay at one place for 200 bucks a night, and you can stay at another place for like a grand a night. Big differences. And that's, that's just the regular rooms, not even getting into suites and stuff. That's just regular rooms from, from uh, complex to complex. They've got all different kind of complexes there. But, yeah, big time, big time differences. You know what? If there's such a difference, that one might make the most sense to me. If, for, if it's about comfort um, and, and being able to get a, a, a great night's rest and, and have, having more, um, more amenities and, and things around you uh, more available to help, you know, treat your body and, and kind of, you know, on the off time, maybe that makes more sense. Now, I still feel like it's the NBA. They're going to all have the best of the best and they're all going to have everything they need. Yep. So I still think that's a, you know, I, I'm closer to swiping right on that. If I'm going to have, if I have to choose one to swipe right on, it's probably that one so far, but I still say swipe left because it's, it, they're going, they're going to be in the best possible situation. And why aren't they all staying in the same, in the best place until that's, but maybe that's what it is. Maybe if you can fit, five teams yeah. in, a, in the best hotel then the top five seeds stay yeah. there and yeah, then the next best there. hotel the next five seats something like that but you know i, I feel like they're going to shoot be at the best of the best that disney has to offer everybody so right. i don't know how, right. how much of a difference it's swipe left be. again uh this has become no fun at all uh <laughs> next this is mine this is what i think i think if you want to give a team home court advantage for the game. You let the higher seed have, or whoever's supposed to be home court for that game, right? It's a 
two two one 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 series. Whoever the home team would supposed to be, I think they should have golf carts to get from the hotel to the to the arena, and the other team's got to walk. A walker or has to walk? They have to walk to oh, the arena walk. from the I hotel. She said they have a walker, like they have to walk with an old person's walker. I mean, to they the- use that if they want. I don't care. <laughs> Maybe to punish them, make it slower. I don't. Anyway. Um, <laughs> That 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 sounds similar to the hotel thing to me. Yeah, it does. Uh, and it's funny you mention that because so, um, you know, I, I I've kind of I kind of was pretty hesitant about going on this trip. Who it's going to be my immediate family, my brother, sister, their significant others, and their kids, and my dad and myself. And so, I just the amount of money that it's going to cost hurts my hurts my whole body to think about. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I was I was hesitant, but I wanted to. They convinced me to go because it's a family trip, and I want to see the kids have fun. Um, but <laughs> I I'm staying at a completely separate, way off the grid hotel, away from everybody else, because I wanted to save that money. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to take like a shuttle bus to meet everybody every day, the rest of my family. <laughs> so I'm gonna be staying at a hojo. I'm gonna be staying at Howard Johnson or something. At the like Howard that. Johnson down in, the road, in, uh, yeah, in in like Tallahassee or something like that, and have to take the have to take the Greyhound. Adams, in, the, Adams in Miami, while everybody else is in Orlando. It's not gonna be as good as Miami. It's gonna be like uh yeah, you're right, in Tampa is. Bay or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Oh goodness, I think they need to do, but I do think they should they should get some uh, cameras and they would make a little bit more money off of this. You could do like a big brother reality thing, right? Because everybody's trapped in the same areas. Let's let's see what these dudes are doing while they're let's let's see how many of them go out and party at the hotel bar. How many of them are <laughs> swimming all night watching Disney movies on the big screen by the pool? You know what? Everybody's so close to back to normal now. Anyway, I guarantee in another in another month when they start up. Everybody's all everybody's families are just going to be hanging out at the pool and do it. I mean, especially another month goes by. Well, if they're going to be playing basketball out. together, then there's no and they're going to be they're basically quarantined together at that point anyway. Then and your family's going to be there. You might as well. Yeah. At that point in time, you can go ahead and hang out because you're all going to be swapping breath and with everybody mm-hmm. else. And but I, they're probably going to still try to have do the distancing thing where they're going to try to keep people keep families apart six feet or whatever. Um, People are ignoring that now, just flat out. People are ignoring that. But so it, I still think that you can, you can try to maintain some semblance of safety by asking people to do that, wearing masks and stuff, because it's still, it's still kind of important enough to do that. But, um, but I, I think people are just going to make their own decisions. And, and some people will. Some people will try to do the distance thing. Some people will wear masks. But I think a lot of people won't. And I think you're right. It's, they're just going to be like, you know what? We're all here for the next, uh, what's it going to be? Four, five, four months or whatever, three months. We're just going to, let's just pass it around to each other. <laughs> well, no, but, I mean, they're going to have, they're going to do testing. They're going to have, they're going to have access to testing. I'm sure if families are going to be there, everybody's going to be able to get tested probably multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're going to, they're going to have access to, to medical care and all that kind of stuff, you know? And by the time that you go, uh, they're supposed to have like uh, a million uh, or two or, or what is it? 20 million, 200 million, 200 million might've been the number uh, tests uh, or vaccines available by November. So you might be able to get yourself vaccine, a vaccination, yeah. buddy. If there's an approved vaccine, I'm I'm all about it. I'll take that. I'll take two of them. Give me two. Of, give me a shot in each arm. Give me a double. You can double shot of that, baby. Adam doesn't ask for a double at the bar, but he'll take a double at the doctor's office. <laughs> I'll take a double shot of uh, chloroquine, uh, whatever the heck that thing was, whatever they, whatever they find. Hydrochloroquine. I can get you some of that. Aaron took that for her rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> I can get you some of that. I got some upstairs. I think that's. I think that's one of the things. Um, isn't that a isn't that a steroid? 
uh, the no the hydroxychloroquine is a uh, anti-inflammatory kind of a deal. So okay. it's not I, something that cures it. It's something that keeps your lungs from inflaming. It's something that that is supposed to. It, it's nothing. The, the it, it what <laughs> that hydroxychloroquine thing had nothing to do with curing the coronavirus. It had oh, everything yeah. to do with helping your lungs. Symptoms, right. Yeah. Treat. It's exactly what it is. Treating the symptoms. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think they had me taking something similar to that when I was sick. Like early on at the beginning, you know, it was the end of February, end of February, I think. They were going to mix, they were talking about mixing that drug with a steroid. Yeah. Anyway, now we're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. doctors. Uh, we're not doctors. We are, no, we, we, we're, we're, we're trying to be too many things today. So <laughs> yeah. let's go swipe left, swipe right, uh, Major League Baseball. But we're going to let you ask me some fun things, even That's though right. we just got terrible news today. Uh, one thing, uh, one thing more about the basketball thing, I think my suggestion, if we want to give somebody home court advantage, is we bring the higher seated team's PA announcer to announce the game. Because I totally thought you were going to say there's cheerleaders. At the home, no, forget about cheerleaders. I don't care about cheerleaders. Bring the announcer, bring the PA announcer. Cheerleaders and mascots are the biggest waste of time and money at sporting events. Now, you bring the PA. I don't know why you say that because you miss so much of the game because you can't keep your eyes off of them. And you're like, I'd rather have you be gone so I can watch this game instead of asphyxiating on you. I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, Chris. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Um, Bring PA announcer because look, when when that guy's announcing everybody, when announcing the starting lineups in the beginning, man, is his excitement so much higher for the and when guys make buckets, his excitement's way up here. No doubt, home no team. Doubt. And oh God, gross! Look how white and skinny my arm is when I do that. That's gross. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're allowed to go out and get sun, man. You're allowed oh, to, no, no, no. Your to get even, sun. Even if there was no coronavirus, I don't go out and get sun. <laughs> no, um, and I certainly don't work out. That was obvious when I just did that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, that was, that's my suggestion. Bring him because uh, guys are gonna feel gonna feel uh, feel better about making making plays. And when they get announced before the game, if their home announcer is there, uh, and and then when he announces the other team, it's real subdued. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very monotone. Sure, uh, and you can even pipe in some booze over the last week. So I heard work. about I heard about this app that they're talking about for me. Uh, I can't remember what sport it was, but they 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 were trying this app out. It's probably in Korean baseball or something crazy. But you can live watch the game, and you've got cheer, boo, and there's like five different things you can hit, and it's you you hit that as things happen. And there's so many, however many people watching it live on their app, and it would come in and almost, it would be an individual clap. But when you have, you know, 50,000 people on the app and they all clap at the same time, there's a oh, little you, bit of a cheer. You can hear here. everybody else using the app at the same time? No, no, no. The people, on the, the people there will be able, like in the stadium. So, okay. yeah. So, basically, over your app, because you'll be listening to the, and watching the game there, so as you hit that clap and everybody else does, it'll all come in. But if you're the only one trying to be silly, they pipe you down. Oh. So okay. as the more things come in, the louder it gets. I got gotcha. you. So gotcha. there's no woos out there like at the Reds game, the seventh inning uh. of the Reds game when I want to punch the little kid behind me right square in his nose because he can't stop wooing. You are a eyebrow-raising kind of guy right there, buddy. Oh, by the way, we're back on YouTube. Uh, this will be the second week in a row. We're back on YouTube, so there is video of us. If you are on SoundCloud or iTunes or Spotify, you can see Adam's phenomenal beard and his, his Teen Wolf face in general. You can see Teen Wolf live on – not live. I'm so used to saying that. You can see it recorded and played the next day on YouTube. That's right. Um, so, okay, let's get into this major league baseball thing. Uh, we're going to do the swipe left, swipe right. Like you said, 
I like the way you did yours for me a lot better than I'm doing this one. So I apologize for how boring this is going to be. No way. We'll make it fun. So, okay. So swipe left or swipe right. 82 game season, October playoffs, uh, prorated salaries plus the additional sliding scale cuts. Uh, so basically what we were talking about last week that the that Major League Baseball first proposed, which means I already know your answer to this. Swipe left. We talked about it last week. I totally talked about how much I can't stand it. I got to figure out which way to tilt my head now because I have an eye that sits lower than the other. So now I realize that I got to give it this tilt so it looks like my eyes are the same. Because if I go here, what? this eye is way smaller and it stays closed and it's lower on my face. You can't see that? It's clear as day. No. That's no, everybody everybody sees that's incorrect. It. <laughs> that's in, I know you know your face way better than I do. That's incorrect. Anyway, so um <laughs> I, no, I, I swiped left to that. Was... I swiped left to it yesterday or last week. I swiped left to it today. Uh, and, and, and I, I, I kind of liked what the, what major league base or what the players association came back with. Uh, I should probably not do that. I'd be doing exactly. So, so, and just a little side note with that proposal, salaries, total salaries go from about $4 billion to about $1.2 billion total for all players. <laughs> um, and that's oh, the one okay. totally in. Well, no, I mean, it'll be, I, I'll say, I'll, I'll tell you the same numbers for the next one, right? Um, and that's the one like we talked about last week. So $563,500 is the, is the minimum salary mm -hmm. in Major League Baseball. And those guys would get in that sliding scale, uh, would get about 47% of their original salary. And then the guys, the Mike Trouts and Garrett Coles that make $36 million a year, would end up making about 23%. So the, the guys that make the most money have the biggest cut. We talked about that. Swipe left for you on that. Now, the proposal that Major League Baseball players came back with just the other day, swipe left or swipe right on a 114 games. Playoffs don't start until November. Prorated salaries that they agreed upon in March, and that's it. So they get paid for every game they play, right? Um, that cuts, that would cut uh, salary, total salary from 4 billion to about 2.8 billion. So a little more than double what Major League Baseball owners mm -hmm. first proposal was. So 114 games, play the playoffs later. They're also playing an extra uh, almost 30 games or 32 games. Correct. Correct. 42. 32. It, it's, it would be, it would actually be, they would actually, in, the, in Major League Baseball's first proposal, it would actually be more total money. Um, it would be more total money at the end of it. So even though that doesn't, I read that, it doesn't sound like that makes sense if total yeah. salary is going to be 1.2 compared to 2.8. But that make any sense at all. There, maybe it was maybe it was for their maybe it was for their next proposal. Anyway, 114 games, just just swipe left or swipe right on basically the players' association's rebuttal. Uh, so uh, I hate that I have to do one or the other on this because I'm not a hundred percent in on this uh, because of the playoffs starting in November. That if the Reds are in the playoffs and we're playing in November, or if Chicago in Chicago in November or Detroit in November or New York, God, heaven forbid, New York in November with their, oh my God, no, that sounds horrible, horrible. Playoffs going into December at that point in time? No. I swipe left only for that reason. If they're going to do an 82-game schedule, prorate the salaries to half a season, start the playoffs October like you normally would, I'm good. But this, I'm not 100% in on that either. And the owners turned it down, and a big part of it was the playoffs starting in November. The problem uh, – never mind. Go ahead. What's next? <laughs> well, the, 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 so the owners want to keep the playoffs in October. The players right. are willing to extend it into November to play right. more games because they want to play more regular season games. 
Um, now the owners want to keep the swipe left or swipe right. Apparently, so I, I'm hearing both that Major League Baseball, the owners are have said they're not going to come back with another proposal. So they they denied uh, the Players Association's proposal, and they're saying they're not going to come back with one. But if we did, it would be 50 games, prorated salary like they originally agreed upon, not the extra cuts, and playoffs in October like normal. 50 games? 50 games. Now, every one of these scenarios it um, offers extended playoffs. Right. So there's some version of extended playoffs in all of these. But 50, 50 regular season games at prorated salaries in the playoffs pretty much maybe even a little bit earlier uh, if you're only playing 50 games. But, or maybe you spread those games out a little bit more. Uh, well, or, or, I mean, by the time that they get a spring, uh, uh, half of a spring training in, it's going to be around there anyway. Right. 50 games. I don't – man, that number is so low. I don't like that number. Uh, I, I'd ha there, there's got to but, – but they're getting their prorated salary at that point in time. So they're getting paid for the games that they play. Right. I enjoy that. That's a big part for me. Um, the players obviously want to play more games. I'm good with it. I'll swipe right to that. I'm good. Extended. Let's let's just get some baseball going. I'm good. At least the players are getting paid for the they're getting paid for the games they play. That's my biggest thing. Everybody should get paid fairly for the games they play. Just like you still get your you if you're if you're working. You get your salary, right? It might be working less. It might cut you back, but you're still getting paid your hourly rate, basically. So I'm, I think I'm good with that. I'm going to go ahead and say swipe right to that. How about that? Good job. Now, <clears throat> I, I think I may have mixed that up, and I think, I think the, 80, the original 82-game offer where you get the prorated, the prorated salary plus the additional cuts, you know, right that that sliding scale cut um i think that in that case playing more games in in taking taking some of that money away from what you're supposed to be getting i think would end up being more you players would end up getting paid more than this 50 game thing so um i think that's where the difference was there was one there was i don't think i don't think you understand the biggest part of this for the players though it's not how can we make the most money? It's how can we keep, how can we make the money for what we are doing? So if I'm still playing, I'm playing for my rate. Like, it's like uh, uh, my, my wife, she got cut back to 16 hours. They didn't ask her to cut back to 16 hours a week. This is weeks ago. She's back to regular time now, but they didn't ask you, ask them to cut back half their their hours and at the same time also take an extra percentage off on top of that no they, she still got paid her hourly rate for that time so i i feel like that's the big thing for the players right now because as soon as they start giving into things like that it opens up opens things up for the for the owners to do a lot of different things and use this as an example of how it worked quote unquote, how it worked when we did this. Um, so yeah, I think I'm, I'm more okay as long as the players are getting paid for the games they play based on the salaries that they, the contracts that they signed. And they agreed to that. The players already agreed to that. Right. So I'm good with it. Let's do it. Right. Okay. So um, I'm glad you mentioned feeling like 50 games is so low because my last one for you, is swipe left or swipe right. The shorter the season, the less valid the champion. No, I, I think I'll swipe left to that because if you look at who's in the playoffs, if you take a team, if you, I think if you go back the last, let's just go back 50 years. 
and you were to say, all right, let's take a look at the last 50 years and the teams that, well, forget 50 years, since they expanded the playoffs to wild cards. Um, so however long that's been. Two years? Uh, <laughs> no. Like no, 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 not the extra wild card. But when they, instead of just winning the pennant, and then, oh, like, so you had a – when you made it to the playoffs, only the top four teams – or the top – yeah, the top four – so it was, you know, the National League Championship Series. Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah. So they expanded the playoffs. Uh, so so let's say since, uh, I don't know, 90-something, early – late 80s, mid 80s, whenever. Let's go back uh, 30 years and take the teams after 50 games – I'd want to know the difference in if they made the playoffs after 50 games then, what the standings were compared to the end of the season and how different those really were. Because I think you're going to get – you're still going to get 70, 75 to 80% of the same teams in the playoffs as would have been in the beginning. Now, you, you might have a World Series champion that came out of one of those teams that technically wouldn't have been in there in that 30 years. But for the most part, in those first 50 games, you're going to know who the best teams in the league are. For the most part. You know, that's a, a third of the season, basically. And it's a good portion. So I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm okay with it, especially since this is just already going to be a crazy year. Let's just, uh, let's just say it, it is what it is. Come out of the gate hot every Every single game means something. You're down by six in the eighth inning. Don't put your second baseman in to pitch. <laughs> Bring somebody in in case you get a chance to make a – get a little comeback. You don't – you know, you're going to keep a – you know what I mean? You're going to keep a pitcher in there so he can – so he can throw and give you an opportunity to come back in the ninth. It, yeah. it, I, I'm, I'm in for it. I'm, I'm, I think I'm good. I think I'm talking myself into this. Even though I, I don't feel like, like you're, I, I feel like, like you're, yeah, I feel like you're a little further along and you're a little back closer to the middle of everything than you were last week. I, I'm, I'm very proud of your, of your uh, progress. I feel like I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> in the spirit of, uh, of, of progressing uh, that we're mm -hmm. in right now, that's, uh, that's a good thing. Thank you. So uh, okay, so that's really, I mean, that was the big thing. I, I just kind of wanted to kind of present the very, very basic general things about each side's proposals. Um, the biggest I'm thing still, about, I, What's that? Go no, go. I, I was going to say, I, I, I'm still a little, because I saw that basically they're going to, they're going to give them the option like baseball. If they come back with something, they're going to say, well, it's either 82 games and um, you know, basically cl some, something close to the first thing we offered or much less games this 50 game thing and we'll pay you the full prorated thing that we already agreed to. The owners don't want to pay the total dollar amount and the players want to get paid for what they're doing. So if that's where it comes down to, there's got to be a negotiation, right? It can't be 114 games. We get all the money or 82 games and you don't get all your money minus some that's there's that's so far apart. It's not even funny. So find that negotiating point. I'm getting paid for every game I play. But I gotta pay less. I gotta play less games. I think that I, I'm okay with it. I think you could probably figure out a way to do 62 games and just not 50 is a that's not a lot of games at all. But is what it is. You know, if you get you you win, you you pick and choose your battles and you you take your victories and of getting paid for what you do fairly. That's the whole thing. I want to be paid fairly for what I'm doing out there. And they will be. And the prorated thing is the seems like the most fair thing, certainly. And I'm glad they agreed on that a couple months ago because, yeah, break it down to games. I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly how they get paid. I, I think they get paid – do they get paid bi-weekly? I think they get paid bi-weekly like most people, don't they? I, I always thought it was that way, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that they get paid every two weeks. So Joey Votto gets his $2 million every two weeks. And uh, – <laughs> <laughs> no, that they, they um, it's not a joke. I mean, that's pretty much what he gets. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's 
it, it's it's always funny to listen when they break oh. down like those biggest like the Mike Trouts and the Garrett Coles, those guys that are making the most money per year. When they mm -hmm. break it down by like inning played, like oh, each inning is, he's making is, like seventy thousand dollars or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, crazy. Yeah. Like Joey Votto watches a pitch and makes more than I do in a year. Yeah. Oh. That's making me a little bit sick. We gotta stop talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> and I am not a I'm a guy that fully supports the thing Joey is it's people the people that the people that get annoyed by player salaries don't understand that money is there. So yeah. if the players aren't making it, then it's just getting shoved in one person's pocket and he becomes an then we don't even want to do comparisons of yeah you know, he's a trillion yeah how many times he scratches his his head and gets and uh, he scratches his head during a game and makes 80 million dollars or something you know it's hey, thank you for so, saying that i thought you were going somewhere else okay so we've got uh so we did baseball we did basketball um and uh really we've got so we've got ba really two more things normally we go right into comedy here <laughs> um, but we uh on your side. we we talked about uh we talked about that uh, a movie that i had just watched a little over a week ago and you were like excited to watch it because it, it just recently in the last few weeks came on to uh netflix was uncut gems right? yes uh a, a movie starring adam sandler in a in a not so uh typical adam sandler role it's not a comedy really it is not a comedy, even though it's hard not to hear and see Adam Sandler not play his normal his normal person and not you know, not laugh a little bit, right? Like when it started and he's going around as this you know New York jeweler, you know talking talking his big game. Like it's hard not to kind of get a little chuckle out of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel like there's almost a little smirk on his face that if it's, if he's supposed to be such a serious character that there's a smirk that I see that maybe isn't really there, but I just kind of see it because I've seen so many Adam it's, Sandler comedies. It's there because they gave him the biggest, most giant fake teeth to wear. Yeah. <laughs> so he can't do anything but hold his mouth open. Yeah. Um, Chris, I, I, you know, for a while, I went ahead and watched it because, number one, I, I've been a big Adam Sandler fan for a long time. Um, and number two, I've heard, I heard a lot of people talk about, when this came out in theaters, people started talking about, this is an incredible performance. This is such a great movie. This, this should be, Adam Sandler should be at least nominated for some serious awards here. And so I was like, man, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of good stuff about this, a lot about, about the performance, a lot about the, how good the movie is. Okay, I'll just, I'm just going to jump right to it. This was, a ter this was a, not a good movie. And I, I hated his character. I hated it. Uh, you're supposed to hate his character. You're I, supposed I, to. So it worked. So it worked. So for you, it worked. You're supposed well, to hate his character. Uh, however... The, I'm not so upset about that kind of stuff as I am. Uh, they they could have done a little bit better research. You're not going to walk into uh, a casino in uh, Atlantic City and make a a, a three a, a parlay a, a three way parlay on prop bets. They're just not going to do that. You can bet a prop bet, but. Eh, most casinos aren't going to let you like we've all made bets on the opening tip right i mean it is what it is yeah. most of those places most are not night for me most of those places are not i don't know i just feel like that's so far from the norm when it comes to betting um i don't know i, I feel like they could have did a little better research that way that was another big part of this movie that I had trouble with is that it seems so far fetched. Now I'm sure there are factions of society that are pretty, pretty close to that. Uh, I'll bet there are people that are similar to him, his character and kind of that business and kind of like a high roller, um, you know, 
addicted or to gambling, that or kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and, and you know, a little, a little shady. You know, everybody kind of going, kind of going behind each other's backs, even partners and people that they know well. Um, I, I'm sure that exists, but for me, it was so hard to to look at you know acting performance and like uh, you know how it's directed and how it's shot. I couldn't look at any of that because it's so, it's so high, it's so like fast paced and so uh, just chaotic the whole time. And there's, he's just, everything's terrible. Like everything is so, it's, it's all going wrong all the time. And he's, it's, it's one, it's bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. And it's like, it's a good decision. You make a great bet. But, but it's, it's, but his, it was his decision to have the money that he had to pay off the guys that wanted to kill him because he owed them money at, at least two or three times in that movie that he actually got the money, called the guy, I have your money, and then stopped immediately in to place another bet with that money, right? And he hit twice, right? I think he, he hit Yeah, and the one time, the and one he, time, and he threw it the away. bigger bookie called the little bookie and, and- – Canceled it. He said, I heard you took a bet from him. Absolutely not. That's right. Canceled he hit big bet. on that, but didn't hit big because they, they were like, that's our money. Why wasn't that money immediately turned around and given to the guy? Yeah, where'd that money go? That's, I'm, there's a lot of things that confuse me in this movie. Uh, I, I, love, I love Adam Sandler. Happy Madison has struggled here lately with putting out some, some real killer flicks. Although I did, I thought the the wrong Missy. Is that what it was called? Yeah, did you watch the wrong it? Missy. I thought that was okay. I thought that was a little bit better than this, at least. Yes, um, I watched that too. But, I agree. But but it, I I feel like they could have found somebody better than David Spade to play that character. But you know, Adam Sandler's gonna pick his buddies. Um, so I I feel like a fifty five year old David Spade probably wasn't the person for that with just a little bit too much makeup and uh, some blonde hair. He looked they weird. He did. They could have done, they could have just, you know, got somebody that was actually in their 40s or low 40s or 30s <laughs> instead of trying to make David Spade look that way. But uh, no, this movie he was, was... He was Richard. It was, that was Richard from Tommy Boy playing the... Yes, playing the exactly, screen. exactly. It's I don't under 25 years older now. Right. I don't understand why... I don't understand how in the uncut gems I'm lost. I'm lost in the, in the affair. I'm lost in the affair. That, because, I might be able to help you with that. That's the one thing I felt like I could understand a little bit. I felt like that was the most not realistic affair that I've ever seen in my life. Like, that girl was she she seriously was head over head over heels for him like no joke and she 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 didn't make any sense it just didn't make any sense to me i felt like it was a sugar daddy situation um but but but, but she was into it like she 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 went and got all his money and didn't try to steal it like took it made the bet and That's, didn't try to take the bigger sugar daddy while she was at the casino. Instead, instead that guy, that guy, turned in the betting ticket, got his million dollars, yeah. and then gave it to her. And we don't even know what happened to her. I need to know what she did with this money. She has the money now. I I, I imagine she had to go back to the shop, find him dead, and then decide whether to what to like. Okay, I have all this money. They don't, nobody else knows where it is now. Nobody else knows that he, he placed this bet. I'm the one that went and did it for him. I have all the money. I live happily ever after with uh, the weekend now. Now I'm, now I'm going back to the yeah. weekend. I, swear, I would have started to begin with instead of big teeth Adam Sandler. So <laughs> it, was, it was, I was disappointed in that movie. I was. I was disappointed in the weekend performance as well. I always see him as more a more wholesome, uh, more of a wholesome kind of guy. I have never seen. I I had heard of him plenty of times. Had never seen or listened to the weekend before. Yeah, well, he he had some really weird hair for a while. He would have been on our worst hair. Hey, hey, hey. He's a lot like Peyton. Weird hair. 
Alfred Payton. Hey, look, your hair is getting close to him. <laughs> to Mr. Payton. We'll look, put in that right front. Now, we'll put yeah. in that front Alfred Payton umbrella. Whatever. There. there it is right there. Yeah. It's, like, it's like he faded it all up and then just, like, let the front dread itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. I don't know. All right. So, uh, on from there. On from there, let's get into our, uh, our, our next comedy segment or what we normally do on the comedy segment which is uh, go through and critique or, or rate a stand-up comedian, uh, a stand-up comedy performance that has just come out. We try to stick with some more newer stuff. This week we went with Patton Oswalt. Right, his, his new special, I Love Everything. Um, <clears throat> I, Except I, Denny. What's that? Except Denny's, apparently. <laughs> Except Denny's. I mean, who really likes Denny's, though, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love those greasy spoons, dude. I go to Waffle House all the time. I yeah. leave my house, go to Waffle House, I'll get three eggs and a side of bacon. And I, I, that's my, I love that. Sit down, talk to the greasy spoon ladies that give you your food. They're my favorite people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at the uh, track marks on the arm. No, sorry. I shouldn't. That's Man. Not that is no. That's not good. That's not good. Um, it, Terrible. It, I, I'm, I'm is, getting into the. Spirit, I'm getting into the spirit of what Pat Oswalt was talking about. That's all I'm doing. All right, there, that there, wasn't there. a real thing. Right. Um, okay, so <laughs> this was. Uh, I, I kind of prefaced it last week by saying, like, I, I had had kind of a love hate thing with Pat Oswalt over the years, and um, I didn't love him at first, but I've heard him. I've heard, I've, I think I've seen all of his stand-up specials and I, um, he said some really funny things and I, I can appreciate that he, even though sometimes it feels like maybe he's kind of trying to do a little bit too much on purpose with the, with the, uh, you know, the vocab, the vocabulary that you don't get from a lot of comedians. Um, he, 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 he has a very creative, um, imagination a very creative imagination and I can appreciate that. And it's been, you can see that if you go back and watch his other, his other specials and just like everybody else who has more than one special on Netflix, as soon as they come out with a new one, one of the most popular, most popular things watched on Netflix is one of their old ones because people yep. see the new one and they're like, Oh, now I know who this is. He had another one. Okay. I can watch that. Yeah. So same thing uh, that's going on there. So go back and watch another one too. If you, if you watch this one, um, it's, he's, he's similar, but he's getting older. And I, and I, I think I'm liking that. He talked about how he's 50 now and things change. In fact, he opened it that his, his cereal is different. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we talked about the, My talked cereal about the some colors that aren't even in, in our real world yeah. it is as bright as they are to being, beige and brown and not chocolate brown 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 yeah yeah brown is the dirt in the in the grave that awaits you i think is what that awaits you. that's what it is yes <laughs> um yeah and, and on you know the he ate the sugary cereals and on the back of the box is the maze help sugar bat find his insulin or whatever it was um, <laughs> <laughs> and now switch to 50 years old now he's eating the sorghum farm amaranth flakes <laughs> he, talks about the, he talks about the the hippie farm that they grow it on how that that's the back of the box now yeah um the box is hospital white, he says, and it's a tan bowl. We thought of this idea while at a fish concert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, I like that was good. that was a good joke just to open it up. And then he talked. You know, he's he, he, the biggest part of his identity now is that he's a father. Um, he he, you know, anybody that follows has followed his career for a while. Um, he got married pretty pretty you know kind of late in life in his forties. Um, had a daughter, and then his wife passed away. Um, had uh, I don't I don't think it was cancer. It was some kind of it, it was some kind of illness that I didn't was, know that. I, to be honest, by the way he talked about it, it almost sounds like he went through a terrible divorce. Yeah, it was. He would no. He was in love with his wife. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you noticed. I think he wears both wedding rings because he, within two years, got remarried. 
he had a wedding ring on the ring finger of each finger or on each hand I mean hmm. um, so I think he still wears his old his wedding ring from his first wife and the, the one from his new wife so anyway he did he went through a terrible tragedy a, a couple of years ago uh, and he got but you know he got his, so he he talked about that he started raising his daughter on his own and he was kind of uh, just coming to grips with the fact that he was that's just what he, he was going to do from now on and then he met right. this great woman and, and got married got remarried and everything um, and he seems like a happier guy because he is um, he has always been a, a more cynical kind of guy a more cynical comedian over the years and it seems like he still kind of is that way you can feel that but he's much less so now than I think he used to be when he was younger yeah. at least that, that's that's the way I feel about it um, so I liked, you know, some of it was a little like in every, every special we've seen almost, um, there are little lulls where you're like, eh, okay, that was okay. But for the most part, I thought he did some really good jokes and the way he tells jokes, the way he writes jokes, I feel like is, is very elaborate, very detailed. And he, yeah, and they, he probably and they, uses a thesaurus and, and, you know, and finds the, and they thing. move together. They, they move, he keeps a topic, right? He keeps mm -hmm. It, whether it be I'm um, 50 and it's not necessarily all about him being 50, but it has to do with people that are 50 things that they have to deal with. Right. So mm -hmm. I like that. I like that whole, the, the, the way that moved together, the stuff in his house with the contractors and then the, the contractor introduces you to the, to the underworld of subcontractors and oh, the Kirby and all that Joe, all those Joe, <laughs> those were, I enjoyed a lot. I enjoyed a lot of it. He, he, I thought it was pretty good. There is no, there's no Kirby. <laughs> there is no Kirby, by the way. <laughs> but you will have beautiful wallpaper. <laughs> Once it's done. Watch it. I'm going to say this. I'm going to go ahead out on a limb. I'm going to tell you, watch, uh, what's his first name? Patton. Patton. Watch Patton Oswalt um i think this was a i think this was i think he did a good job i think this is a comedy sh i think this is a comedy special that you will watch and enjoy especially if you're a middle-aged white guy uh it, it was a little weird because he immediately starts talking about racism in the beginning of it and it was like hey he fell right into the times right so um he's he's uh i, I thought it was pretty good uh, I'm not, I'm not jumping into like the fours for him, but I'm going to go with like a 3.4. You said 3.4? 3.4. I already marked mine. I can show you. Um, Share the screen. Yeah. I was just going to say, let's see if we can do this. All right. This is our, uh, can you see this? Uh, it's coming up. Adam has started sharing screen. I don't know. Uh, I assume it's being recorded uh, from yeah. your computer correctly. Mine just says that you've started sharing the screen. Oh, there it is. What do you got? Do you see Holy my cow, column on the right? right? I'm, I have nothing next to mine, and you've got 3.4. We could have been three better. Three hours ago, I put that in there. That's insane. 3.4 for both of us. Uh, big difference from Jerry Seinfeld. We were so far apart on. We were pretty close yeah. on Chad Daniels, though. Right. I was thinking it was a while since we had been so close, but um, but yeah, I, I we're both at three point four. Nice, good work. I'm 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 proud of you, brother. I'm I'm proud of us. I feel like that means this was something for everyone to love. Do it. Give so it, what's give next? it a watch. Are we going with Hannah next? Are we doing the? Or the Hannah Gadsby, or what are you thinking? Maybe, maybe this is a reach, um, but should we? We can do that. Or you know, I was thinking in in kind of the kind of the, the spirit of everything. Should we try to pick? Now this would be a, a probably one that I was thinking we should go with a woman, a black guy. Uh, uh, Indian guy, an Asian guy, somebody that's not a middle-aged white guy. I feel like that's what we've done for the last. You want to get away from the middle-aged white person. I, I could not that there's. I mean, there. I, you know, we did. We've done. Uh, Can I tell you something see. that I heard today that was really surprising? Before we get into this, what's that? Uh, so, uh, Sports Illustrated, right? It used to be huge to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated. 
uh, yep. in, in, in a conglomerate bottom out. And they're basically trying to do away with the print of Sports Illustrated, right? Oh. Interesting. There are zero people of color that write for Sports Illustrated. Oh, wow. Absolutely zero. Wow. Anyway, so we were talking about how many writers uh, did it say how many writers they have? uh, It didn't say, but I mean, you got to figure there's got to be at least 15 to 20. Yeah. Huh. Throughout their, throughout their online and their, and their print base. Yeah. Huh. Well, um, anyway. All right. So you want to go, um, oh, shoot. Well, what about, Go ahead. Who do you got? There's, I mean, I, I had some, you know, some people written down uh, that were, that have older stuff on there, but I mean, we could do Hannah Gadsby. Uh, I mean, that would be, uh, that would be something different than what we've been doing. I think like nine of the last 10 have been like um, people that look like us and are close to our age. How about, how about this? Last year, last year, Kate, Ken Jong Ong or Ken Jong or whatever his name Jung. is, Ken Jong mm-hmm. uh, had a special come out, or or you have uh, that we always talked about. We wanted to do uh, uh, Gabriel Iglesias. We talked about doing his because we each had our thoughts on it. He had one last year that we never we never ended up getting to. Um, you know, one we didn't do last year either. That was a who's a huge uh, comic is Kevin Hart irresponsible did we do that oh did we have we done a Kevin Hart uh, I don't think we've done a Kevin Hart and this is probably the well not probably he is the highest gro- grossing comedian in the history of comedy now it's because he's 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 slightly scared to go to the Dave Chappelle side where Dave Chappelle could care less about anybody and anything and what he talks about <laughs> Kevin Hart has to apologize when he talks about things because he still wants to do movies with The Rock. <laughs> Dave Chappelle ain't doing movies with The Rock, but no. Kevin Hart also makes a whole lot of money and has a much wider base of fans. I, I kind of like this irresponsible because I think he gets into uh, his escapades, shall we say. Yeah. He's got himself in trouble for. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I watched it when it first came out, but I, I, I'm, I'm happy to watch it again. I, I it. love Kevin let's Hart. Do, let's do Kevin Hart. I love Kevin Hart, too. Let's do Kevin Hart Irresponsible. Right on. That was there easy. So we got Kevin Hart Irresponsible next week. We've got, um, we've got uh, let's see, uh, we, we're probably going to have more baseball, definitely more basketball, because I think we're going to really start pushing next week and the week after we're going to really start seeing basketball come to form because they're going to have to, because they're going to have to get these guys into a gym and let them start playing before they can get a season in. So I think in the next two weeks, is going to be a lot of fun to see what really happens in sports. The world is going to slowly open up. We're in the summertime. You're going to see people together. Uh, The virus can't live over, was it 85 or 95 degrees? So we're almost to those temperatures. Yeah, um, it can't live on surfaces, on certain surfaces, I think, beyond sure. uh, or for a very long time or whatever, beyond those temperatures. So uh, wear a mask. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Everybody will be healthy from then on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, yeah, uh, let's, 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 let's do that. I was I, I had something on my mind. I, I was I was gonna say, um, we had a list. I kind of ran down a quick list last week, and we were trying to think of the next person to do uh, for the Sorry. company segment. And it was my turn. It was my turn to pick. No, no, I know. I, I was just gonna say um, the uh, there are a bunch that I had from like 2016, 17, 18 um, that I had written down. You know that we could go back just comedians that I knew were good. Who were you uh, looking at? One of them, one of them, I was thinking about that I mentioned last week was Michael Che, and uh, he's on he's on Saturday night Saturday Night Live. You probably know I that. love Michael Che. So I'm totally down for that. Let's do him. 
Well, that's all right. We can, we can do it. It's just funny because uh, at least two different people have posted in the last day or two um, a clip from, from that. It was 2016, so it was four years yeah. ago already. Uh, but it was a clip from that. And he talked, he did a, a, a joke about Black Lives Matter. And, uh, and, and it was like, it's so, like, it's so uh, relevant to, to right now. So people were like playing that and it's, he, he jokes about it, but he's also kind of like, kind of making a statement, you know, like, like most people are, but yeah, he's allowed to joke about it <laughs> because it was in a, it was at a stand up it was a stand up comedy set. Um, and he's, he's, uh, qualified. So, um, anyway, that's, I was just, I, I had that on my mind. I like it. No, I'm down. Let's do Michael Che. I'm totally down. I let's say well, let's do Michael Che. Let's get in the spirit of uh, Black Lives Matter. Let's let's. <laughs> no, it's well, not necessarily I say, that, a joke, just, but I say it as a joke, but it, I'm in, in, in all seriousness. Let's because there's a lot of that in it, and 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 you're gonna hear from somebody who's dealt with things in in his life. So it and no matter what your position on anything is. It's kind of talk about it and he's going to joke about it and take a, take a minute to separate from just a minute because it's not, we don't want to just get away from this, from what's going on. We don't want to separate ourselves. We don't want to bury it or anything like that, but take one hour and enjoy some laughter, even on the same topic. It's, uh, it's okay to do our friend, our friend of the podcast, uh, Andre Edwards at Andre 03. Is it Andre 03 or 06? Uh, at Andre Edwards 06. A uh, friend of the podcast comes on here, talks about the Bengals all the time. Um, he, 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 as a, as, as a, as a, as a strong black man and a daggone good looking black man, as, as we all know, uh, he, he put something on Twitter the other day that made me laugh. And it's, it was, it was, hey, these are tough times, but I think everybody needs to along these lines. Everybody needs to, everybody does need to have time to to get a little laugh in their life, right? And he posted an old Saturday Night Live Eddie Murphy thing about uh, where he dressed up as a white man and like you know he was going to become a white man and all the things he did to be a white guy. It was really funny, and you gotta you have to. For as serious and as terrible as all this is, if you don't have a little bit of that laughter in your life, then you're just living as a miserable person. And don't do that. Don't do that. Have a little laughter in your life. Uh, understand when serious needs to be serious. But understand that it's okay to laugh at yourself as well. Yeah. Yep. Well said. So do you want to do Michael Che this week and then Kevin Hart next week? Let's do Michael Che, and we'll see. There might be a new stand-up comes out, so okay. we'll see. Well, we'll start with Michael Che. I like it. Michael Che, what's it called? Do you know have any idea? Uh, it's called Michael Che Matters, I think. Michael Che Matters. There you go. That's so great. All right, Michael Che Matters and uh, more baseball, basketball, possibly some NFL because as, as strong as the NFL was pushing towards – we will have fans. We will start on time. We will do this. We're starting to hear things slowly change there. Uh, the, there's no conditionings. There's no OTAs. There's, there's, there's a lot of things going on. So, so maybe we get into a little NFL, uh, how they're going to take, take into consideration this coronavirus. Because if it, them and the NBA are the two that have the most physical contact um, involved. So – Maybe we get into some of that too. So until then, don't forget to turn your headlights on. <laughs>